So in the movie Taro, you have this group of college kids and they're staying in this giant mansion and you know, they run out of beer. So the only logical choice of what they could do, they kick in this door that says, do not enter that has a padlock on it. And go scrounging around in this dimly lit dungeon of a room. And when they're in this room, they find a deck of tarot cards in this box. They decide to read each other's horoscopes for some reason. And then something starts killing them off because... And immediately starting off, I actually thought this movie looked pretty good. I mean, like I saw the trailer, I thought the trailer looked pretty good. But the problem that immediately after became a red flag is the fact that I found out this was going to be a PG-13 movie. So I instantly knew what they were going to do with that trailer, and I no longer had any hype going into it. Which in hindsight's not surprising because this is one of those movies that if you've seen the trailer, you've seen the movie. Because this movie's trailer shows you just about everything of interest that happens in this movie. Scene for scene, you see all of the kills, all of the unique creature design. And I know that can be taken as like a metaphor, like they show you everything, but I'm not kidding. This might be the biggest abuser of this concept I've seen in the past 10 years. I mean, every single scene, you see a character die, every single creature design, you saw every single scene in the trailer. They basically just went balls to the wall to get you in the seats. It worked, I guess, but in result, not much afterwards. And starting off with the positives of this movie, because there's not very many, we'll get those out of the way first. I actually thought the creature design, the monster design, you know, like the cards in the trailer, I thought they looked pretty cool in the movie. I thought the creature design and like the set pieces for some of the scenes, and don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean any of the things related to the monsters and the set pieces is scary or tense or anything like that. I just thought it was visually cool on the eyes. Like they blend music a couple times in some of the scenes. They have this like music playing off of vinyl records to fit the scenes. I thought that was pretty cool actually. And I thought that gave a little bit of style to the movie. And as I said, the trailer shows you everything in this movie. So you know exactly what you're going to get for better or worse. They've already, you know, shown you all the cool scenes. So just watch the two minute trailer. They have a little bit of money and time in that regard, but everything other than that just doesn't work and it's a complete mess. And within the first two minutes of this movie, you're going to be hit with some glaring red flags, the way these characters converse, the way the dialogue's written in this movie, because this movie's got to have some of the worst dialogue of the year. It's pretty close to Madam Web. Like the way these characters talk and interact with one another is a complete caricature. And whenever you're in a PG-13 movie, you already immediately require the audience to have a little bit of like suspended belief to get immersed in the movie. You know, it's going to be corny. The acting, the dialogue's probably going to be a little bit stupid, but this movie's like historical and how dumb it asked the audience to be to even get on board a little bit with the movie. It's got to be one of the most criminal, insulting to your intelligence movies I've ever seen written in recent memory. Because what this movie chooses to do is when you have all the friends in the basement and they're reading the horoscopes and such, they're kind of pulling cards based on the birth dates. They're showing, you know, the monsters they align with you've seen in the trailer. And what they choose to do with this is interesting. They basically tell you the entire movie scene for scene in the first three minutes of the movie. What they do is they go one by one, they pull a card, they read the horoscope of the card, and you can immediately pick up because they're not really subtle in the way they're describing the cards. That the cards are directly related in the way they write to the way people are going to die. So if you're a little bit clever at all, and you can pick up on this because they kind of hit you over the head with it, you know immediately how the movie's going to be laid out. Like this. Your card is the executioner. Be patient or you might lose your head. You see what I did there? What do you think's going to happen to that guy? And it would be one thing if they did that for one character, you know, as a little bit of suspense to build up the template of the movie, like what's to follow, you know, give you a little bit of a cliffhanger. But this movie decides to do it every single character for the next five minutes. They pull the cards for every character and tell you directly how they're going to die to your face and in what order they're going to die. And if you're going to do that, at least make it fun, make it a play on words or something, something subtle or riddle, something we can't figure out, but it doesn't take Scooby-Doo to figure this out. I knew line for line immediately when they went through the cards, exactly what they meant for every single one within three minutes. When you get to the acting in the cast of this movie, it's pretty par for the course for a PG-13 horror movie. Now we've kind of gotten to the point we know it's going to happen. It's just a bunch of 30 year olds masquerading as college students. None of the characters are fleshed out at all. You have none of the backstory of any of them. I mean, none of the acting's any good in this movie. And this is another one of those movies that basically picked its cast off of a color wheel. I mean, they got a representation of literally everybody in this movie. They have a black guy, a white guy, an Asian guy. They have some girls. It's like, it's the biggest hodgepodge ever, which is fine inherently. Like, I have no problem with that. I actually like a diverse cast if they add anything to the movie. But this movie... I didn't believe this friendship group at all. I mean, these people have no chemistry with one another. They don't sound like they share anything in common. I don't know, just completely unbelievable cast. There was only one character in this movie that was memorable, and it was the main character, the Asian character played by Jacob Batalon. And the only reason he's memorable is because his acting is so bad. I'm convinced that guy showed up to the wrong studio. Did somebody order a sausage pizza? Well, buddy, you showed up at the wrong studio. They're filming Sausage Sisters down there, but I can do you one better while you're here. We're trying to fill the lead for a movie called Taro. You win? Because to say this guy has porn level acting would probably be disingenuous to that industry. I mean, his comedic timing, his emotional expression, absolutely terrible. And as I said, this movie treats you like the biggest idiot ever. Starting from the Taro scene at the beginning of the movie where they read the cards and they 
tell you the outline for the entire movie. This movie really likes to keep you on the path of A, B, C and tell you immediately what's happening through the dialogue of the characters. You have these characters, for example, one of the cards says something about not having water under the bridge. And this guy literally says out loud in the camera, water under a bridge. We're literally on a bridge right now. And the characters are all very self-aware of the fact that the movie's named Tarot, apparently, because all of their conversations involve like horoscope, astrology. You have people say something stupid and then say, oh, I'm a Taurus. That's right. You should know I'm going to be stubborn. Basically, every confrontation our characters are going to run into in this movie is going to take place in a dark room. Something's going to fly at you and it's going to be a jump scare and they're going to scream in your face when they do it. And as I mentioned earlier about the reason why this is happening to the people, they don't really make that abundantly clear. It's kind of random and there's no real reason why these characters are dying. But there is like this 10 minute exposition dump in the middle of the movie by this lady who looks like Raiden from Mortal Kombat. And she's obviously the token creepy old lady who kind of knows everything about everything from the past to kind of just conveniently make the plot move along because otherwise there would be no rhyme or reason to anything that's happening. And in this movie, it's like a 10 minute dialogue about cursed cards, like why the cards are acting up. I'm going to be honest with you, I kind of zoned out during the entire thing. I was thinking about what I was going to eat when I got home. I mean, I think it was like an evolutionary survival mechanism or something for my brain not to handle it because it was so fucking stupid I couldn't even pay attention. But if I can return to one major positive to this movie, as they tease in the trailer, there's this monster, this card called the Fool. It's like this jester with a spinning head. I thought the scene that thing's in for the three to five minutes of scene time it's on is actually super cool and super well done the way they incorporate old music from a vinyl record. I honestly got the vibe watching this movie that this would have been a better like short film maybe on that particular card. Maybe something would have had a little bit of chemistry going or maybe it would have just been better as an anthology series based on the cards. Something, but they didn't have a feature length movie based off of this, but that was the one individual like skit going on that was pretty damn cool. This is just one of these PG-13 horror movies that takes itself way too seriously. It has no self-awareness. If this would have been a movie that would have leaned into, you know, how stupid it was, like how there's no real plot, it would have been a dark comedy and it would have had like way over the top practical effects, maybe like these insanely cheesy kills or something that were memorable. I think this movie could have maybe been like a cult classic because like the basis for the monsters is pretty cool, but they have absolutely nothing else going for it. I don't know. They show you everything in the trailer. The acting is absolutely atrocious. If there is a plot one, I don't know what it is. Fate's like a big premise in this movie, and unfortunately for Taro, its inevitable fate is being dog shit. And with that, Taro continues to trend the PG-13 horror movies, and what we're doing nowadays, show everything in the trailer, get super cheap B-list actors that can't act for shit. And the only caveat to the dog shit rating for this one is that it could be a little bit of fun to some people, just because it's so bad, it could be like cult classic bad, and the fool and some of the other creature designs pretty good, some people might have fun with this, I don't know, it didn't work for me. So have you seen this mess? If you have, comment down below, let me know, or let me know if you've seen the trailer, if you thought it looked any good. And if you haven't, comment down below, let me know what your favorite PG-13 horror movie is. The one that comes to mind to me that I rewatch a lot, it seems, is Disturbia. If you haven't subscribed already, what the hell are you doing? Click that down below. And there's always more scary stuff, more new releases to come. That's all I got in this video. Peace.